another week of warranty repairs and rectification of our hull. This week, I get down and dirty with some anti-foul, Nino shows off more of his all grip expertise, and the Robertson and Kane Leopard combined team just keep getting the job done. Throwing back to last week's video, I made it quite clear that this is not a hero story for Leopard, it is a redemption story. And after three years of owning a boat where we have spent more time on the hard stand than in the water and had just the most incredibly stressful, awful experience, it is the worst thing we've done. Those companies still have an incredible amount to answer to not just for the poor workmanship, but also the arduous warranty process and everything that we've been put through and what it's cost us. Where there are some heroes is the guys that they have sent here. The team leader and the guys working with him who are from Robertson and Kane or have been brought in by Travelopia and, and mooring side of things. They have fantastic attitudes. They bring a really positive vibe to site and they so far their skill their willingness to listen, their willingness to learn has just been so refreshing. I always want to make sure I give credit to the people who deserve it and it is the team that are here in Trinidad who deserve some credit. To date, their work and their attitudes have been fantastic and I think that that will continue as we move forward to getting Liger finished and back in the water so we can finally, over three years later, enjoy her for what we bought her for. A lot happened today. Um, I didn't want to, I didn't want to really jinx it or film it or anything earlier, but Chi Chi actually went off to be spayed today. So that is our little rescue dog that we've been looking after for a couple months. She has had her big operation and I got the call tonight from the vet to say that she pulled through just fine. So tomorrow I get to go pick her up. But uh, as you can see, it was also busy around Lager today. We have no door. <laughs> so the door was also damaged just like the surrounding window frame as it turned out. So that is also having sections of it stripped back and then the frame around it is getting stripped too. So we, um, we have a lovely plastic door on our boat tonight. And um, if you look carefully at the door, you'll notice we're being watched. <laughs> As you can see, I'm all dressed up, ready to strip back some anti-foul. Now, in taking back the anti I have run into a little problem, which is, I mean, this boat's been out of the water for like 19 months. And if you've dealt with Micron ablative anti you would know that when it's in the water, you can literally rub it with a glove and layers will come off. Like, even just crossing the Atlantic, we lost quite a bit off the bows just from the, the weed in the ocean rubbing against it all the way across. But now that it's been sitting here 19 months, it is like concrete. We considered paint stripper, decided not to do that because the hat holes have already been stripped back once and the barrier coat, we've already done that once. We don't really want to do it again. And the concern with paint stripper is that it would impact the barrier coat. Um, so we're sanding it off. <laughs> I did reach out to the people that make a Micron, which is international. And they said, if we're not going to use a paint stripper, which they do make their own, that I needed to use basically like a really low grit sandpaper and just wet sand the whole thing. So that is, that is my plan for this evening. The original anti foul had new coats painted on in Europe. But as I said, when we crossed the Atlantic, the leading edges of the bows, keels and rudders ablated almost all back to the epoxy barrier coat. With our plans, this doesn't suit us. And given that so many areas of the hull had already been ground back for warranty repairs, we thought we may as well swap anti-fouls at this stage rather than continuing to deal with ablative. We're changing to Petite Trinidad Pro, which is highly rated by other cruisers using it in tropical waters. Despite my best efforts, I am pretty sure that my face is quite covered in anti foul hence the uh, safety glasses. But I feel like I'm making good progress. We have our barrier coat, then we have a layer of blue gel coat, and then it's black over the top. Very top black layer, which is staying like a blue black color. That's coming off like relatively easy, but the layers that are black from Cape Town have gone like this brown color now. 
and they're really quite hard to get off. That that's the bit that I'm just like, damn, this is concrete. And then when I get past that into the blue, that's when I'm kind of going up in grit a little bit to try and salvage the barrier coat. And uh, that's coming off all right too. Like it starts to sort of ablaze if I keep it wet enough. But this, like, uh, have a look. It's that that brownie layer. My God, it is being the bane of my life. Literally, the most satisfying part of this whole thing is doing a section like that and then rinsing it off. Uh, Time for some satisfaction. Getting there. This section here, I reckon not long, so it's gonna look like that section. My hands are getting tingly and I decided when my hands got tingly and I was over it, I should stop. So that's what I'm doing. So it's been about two hours and I've done to there, but I've also taken some of the top layers off back to there. One good thing is that in this section, which I'll show you in a second, the center point, the joint is already done. So it's not that much further down from where I'm at. It is before 6 a.m. again. The boat is quiet and I'm gonna show you around. Things just change really quickly. So I think I'll do two tours this week. They're also working. They finished on the one that had the cracked bulkheads, but now they are working to fix up some stuff on Zulu Down, which is the boat that was here last year. He had some warranty repairs done by the previous contractor and had issues with them as well. So, so they're talking about bringing down the shame tent which for me is just crazy to even think about because this thing's been up for over a year. Our only concern about it coming down is we just really wanna make sure that everything that is made easier by it being up or that relies on it being up is done. Behind me, track mark is progressing. At the moment, you can see it's covered in this brown paper. That's because it's like setting at the moment, I think, and they wanna protect it overnight from there to there is a no-go, no-walk zone. So to get off the boat, you gotta go over the top, down there, and down the ladder. The four peaks on both sides, huge amount of work's happened in there, but I think they might be done too. There was a little Jelco issue in the port one, but um, once that's resolved, we can use our forward storage areas again not had access to them in a very, very long time and they're one of the biggest storage areas on the boat. So getting that back, gonna be great. Along the edge here, they have sprayed the rim of the boat, going all the way around. To here. This is a problem that we're so glad is finally solved and it's ridiculous that I took as long as it did to actually solve this, given they did all this in basically a day. Um, from handover, there was a problem with the gel coat in this area. So the solution multiple times now has been to just, just polish it, just polish it. The problem with that is it got polished and sanded so many times to fix the problem that they actually burnt through all the gel coat in a few places. like. Polishing it was never going to actually fix the problem. The only thing that was going to fix it is respraying it. Thankfully, though, the guys that are here now understand this and it's been done, but it's kind of ridiculous that it took three years when it was pretty clear three years ago that it needed to be done. Some of the other things that are done is that, oh my God, there's a mosquito on the camera. They are unbelievable at the moment. The poor RNC guys have been getting eaten so we've, we've given them all the information about the various mosquito repellents that we've tested over the years and which one which one works better but 
they are vicious right now. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, um, other things that they've got done is the rudders are uh, completely done. They sanded them, put the barrier coat on and did the anti-fouling, so that's cool. Yesterday cleaned down the windows, actually we did that, but we cleaned the windows so that they can keep working on the sides of the hull to so the next time I take you around the boat, only about three days will have passed and you'll be able to see just how much these guys managed to achieve in three days. We're just at Sunny View Vet Clinic in Diego Martin and we have a little extra passenger who's very frisky right now. Oh, we will have big cone of shame. I'm gonna start rubbing her head, she just stops moving. Yeah, she likes that. Oh, you look at me. Oh, you happy girl. She's so sweet. Mm, you can't be too sick if you up like that. You like a bastard. <laughs> like Rose. You I don't bastard. care. I don't care. What are these stitches? I don't care. You bastard. Sit down. Sit on me. No, no, no. I sit you up on the seat. <laughs> you do big Chi Chi obviously is now back at the boatyard. So I just need to make a space for her that's nice and clean. And then also need to do the same for Rose because the track mark area that they're doing and the fact we have no door for a while she's gonna have to be under the boat. So, it'll be dog free upstairs, but dog central down here. Oh, you are happy. You're a good girl. Yeah, you are not a bin dog anymore. You are a baby dog. Obviously helping Chi Chi is not something we had to do. It's not something anyone else here was doing, but, um, we just felt that it was the right thing to do, that, you know, we love animals. We are big supporters of Vet Tail Sailing Chuff who have various spay and neuter programs as well as vaccination programs. We have our own dog who is an absolute princess of a dog. And here we had this little stray who really just needed someone to give her a chance in life. You know, be the change you want to see in the world, put good things out there, all that. So we've helped her, she has had multiple medical treatments now to deal with uh, low platelet counts and worms. Now she's been spayed so the, you know, there is not going to be yet another generation or two of puppies coming from her and she gets to benefit from you know, the health benefits of not having multiple pregnancies as a stray dog. So hopefully very soon she will be going to a new home. There is someone who would like to make her part of their family but I don't like to confirm anything until I know 100% that she is going home with them today. So things are looking very positive for little Chi's future. So we're gonna put Rose, <laughs> I just got head butted by cone dog. So Rose is gonna be at the other end of the boat. We don't want them to be close enough that they can actually like play and get rough because this little nugget right here already wants to play and be rough and be silly. So we need to keep them separate. So I think this end will be her end and Rose can be up the other end. I can hear a little bit of a commotion and some people talking next door. And looking at the time, I think that means we are just about to lose our neighbours, which was another Leopard 45, because they were due to hit the water at 12.30 today and it's currently 12.45, so. Let's go have a look. My God, can't take my off you. Can't take my off you. Our friends were safely relaunched and I actually ended up, they pulled around to the fuel dog and I jumped on for like a impromptu boat ride, which is so nice. I, I know I've said it before, but like when it, another leopard gets launched, for us it's like, oh, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, but we're getting closer. The Zavo, my plan is, I mean, to go and attack the anti for a little bit because we're doing like a bit of a farewell thing on their boat tonight. Look, it's tentative still, but at this stage, it looks like the shame tent is coming down next week. And remember, we filmed basically in real time, so by the time this video goes up, the shame tent will be up. By the time the next one goes up, it might not be. 
So, things are happening around Lago. Today is Thursday, the guys are all on lunch, so I'm just taking the opportunity to actually do a daylight tour for you. So behind me, you can see we have our new spray tent. I'm going to get Nino to explain that in a bit more detail and what's going on here. Going in a bit further, got all the supplies. We go upstairs. Something that we've had to add is a doggy gate for when the guys are working so Rose can't help herself. Chi Chi, that's her you can hear barking. She's super mad right now because the guys are going in the car and they didn't take her. Coming up here, you can see they're still working on the edge of the roof. Something cool, you look and they write notes and stuff so that everybody knows exactly what's going on. They're also working on the edges of the frame so that we can backfill the windows as soon as possible. Coming down the side, they've been working on finishing the sides of both hulls, in particular, the areas around the window which had more work I think than anticipated um, just because of damage that had been done and unfinished repairs and stuff just to this section around the edge. Down here as you can see there's sections of the bridge deck and down near the sides that have been redone. Those are just two different previous repairs that were done uh, by two different companies that needed to be redone and re-looked at. The biggest progress I think over the last few days would definitely be the sides of the hull, the back here, and that painting. So it's good, we're still chugging along. And um, excitingly, we're actually at the point where we're working out a schedule for the guy, Zhongui, from Z Spas to come out and do the mast. And that is just insane that we are actually at the point where we can talk about that because him coming out is something that has been discussed multiple times and we've never actually been ready to action it. So the, the concept of being so close to that is just... <laughs> <coughs> well, hello, today... How do you do it, all group rep? Yeah, you may know me from such programs as... Uh... No, honestly, um, so this one, what we're doing, we're taking off the old matte paint, whatever was on there. So they've been helping me prep all this stuff up. So then, goes from that into there, into our spray booth. Here's the one I made earlier. No, and there's a door in there as well. It just needs to be finished on prepped. So he's stripping back all the, all the metal, all the aluminium, straight back to the bare metal, all, all the grooves, everything else. Um, that's your flashing from upstairs. I've done the underneath. Just had the um, aluminium primer and a 505 primer on top, which, as I'll take you over here now, which is a little example yesterday. I just wanted to try how it works. Because the Max Core, I've never used that one before, but I've used something similar for steel. So it's just, it's just the paint. And it's quite thick, it's nice. But I've put the 505 over the top of that. And where it's separated in the corners, I've just got to touch them up. But I only put a coat of grey on the top of the yellow just to see how it works with each other, how it bonds. Just for mine. mine. Yeah. So they work a treat, so that's perfect. So then when I put the rest of them in, I put my three coats of grey over the top of the yellow. So that's all covered, it covers well. That, that Max Core stuff is really good. We will be saying goodbye to our friends on one of the 1145s that was here in the yard but before they go something that we're going to do is check their rigging tension for them. It is super important to make sure you have the correct rigging tension especially on a catamaran that's under warranty because having incorrect rigging tension can be a reason for avoiding warranty in certain circumstances and we have the same type of tension meter that they actually use in Cape Town. We got it in Italy a couple of years ago, Dylan Tension Meters really helped us out with it and uh, Avery Waitronics and part of what we discussed with them that was that we would love to use it to help other owners, not just ourselves. <laughs>